Hey pals, how we doing? How is everybody today? Hello, Dorian Nightvale. Let's see. I'm gonna have that jazz down really low. Hello, Marina, good to see you. Oh, just a random fry. Welcome everybody to my stream. Satan loves me 666. It's my day off work. So great. That's awesome. I'm um, just contemplating the idea of doing another um, stream event. No, nowhere near as big as my last one, but just a bit, um, just something, um, just something kind of fun, and then and then raise some money for charity along the way. I think that could be fun. Maybe just like the Trevor Project or something. I'm not sure what yet. Who's ready for some Disco Elysium with the Twitch integration? Let me go get, let me go get that Twitch integration turned on. Okay. <sighs> ba 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 ba. Okay. I uh, haven't done uh, done makeup for the stream. <laughs> I haven't even shaved actually. I'm a little bit stubbly. It's terrible. So you might all have to tell me I'm <laughs> tell me I'm beautiful to to keep me from freaking out about this stream right now. <laughs> it seemed fine when I was just doing it for my. Um, my editing stream earlier and now suddenly it's like Ew. oh no okay it's here we go turn that on so if anyone wants to use the disco elysium uh twitch integration to vote on dialogue options um you may have to refresh the page to see it not sure uh, let's build a communism, baby! Hell yeah. Oh, I show my communism build a hat. That's an idea. Hmm. Anyway. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey, Morrigan. I've been playing it myself recently on PS4. It's very weird slash artsy, but fun. It's a good game. Okay. I think it's loading now. It's not moving. Okay, there we go. Seems to be up now. Remember to, uh, if, if, you, if you can, help us out on our fundraiser. We're getting new PC parts and new recording equipment. I would really like to get a, a lav mic for future videos. Uh, so it would be really, really appreciated. And you can do that by doing the command tip. That's exclamation mark tip in chat okay load game um i'm not sure if i need to reconnect to the twitch integration let me have a quick look options twitch integration yes i do I do need to do that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, fortunate soul. Um, copy and paste. Connect. Connection established. Okay. It should now be working. So, um, if you're not seeing anything, any overlay or anything, um, you can pr you can probably reload to get it. But hopefully, you're seeing it now. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. 
in it, your face. I'm gonna let the mirror be for now because I've lo I've got I've locked all those options. Okay. The fan stands still. The switch must be broken because nothing happens. The lights are off again. Ye. The lights are on. The bed is still cold from Can the get broken window, yeah. and not Thank too you. inviting. Oh wow, this overlay is super well done. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. I have not seen it myself. I just, uh, yeah, know of it. <laughs> Thank you. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Um, why not? Have why? How about we have the first vote of the stream? The options are: I'm so alone. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. Or Swallow the emotion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why did I let you vote on this? You horrible goblins. And I'm just going to rerun the vote. I'm just going to quickly rerun the vote because I feel like people aren't seeing the voting options on screen. Okay, we're getting some more votes that time through. And it landed on the same result again. Oh god, alright. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. That's how I feel about you guys th with this vote right now. The door is mute and indifferent. Your despair is a joke to it. <laughs> uh, try the handle knock again or leave. It almost matches the game UI too well because I didn't even notice uh, it was something I could click for a long time. Wow. Inland Empire is just Twitch chat. I love democracy. Oh god. Try the handle is what you voted for. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. I don't know if you all... you hold the metal, you sense the wolf left there by her hand. I don't know if you all know that this is harassing the woman who's staying in this room. I don't, I don't know if you all have played the game. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna knock again. Still no answer. Okay, knock again much harder or leave are the options. And just to be fair, I'm going to let you vote on it, but I have my own feelings. <laughs> oh god. I'm glad to see chat is is split on this one. <laughs> I feel appropriately because uh, you all seem on the side of chaos, generally speaking. But okay, good. Right, we've landed on leave. Let's let's head off for now. <laughs> That's enough of that. We're doing a uh, radical democracy. It's really it's Twitch plays, <laughs> Twitch plays Disco Elysium. Okay, let's go talk to Kim. Morning. I've got some good news. I took care of the body. The thought of him decomposing in my MC wouldn't let me sleep. Oh. Good. Thanks. Or I don't know if I was ready to let him go. We don't have to vote on every single thing. I'm, I'll, I'll definitely, um, um, okay. I don't know if I was ready to let him go. It looks like it's winning. Well, he's in processing now. We have other matters to attend to. <laughs> he kind of wishes you'd acknowledge this contribution, but you've missed your opportunity now. Oh, thanks, guys. You fucked up. You made, you made my relationship with Kim worse. Goddamn. The union muscle finally turned up, and they look rowdy. We need to talk to them. 
Okay. Uh, why do we need to... Uh, I know I need to talk to them, because they're people involved in the case. Uh, what do you mean, rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Nice. Are these men God told us about yesterday? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. There are so many of them, maybe we should call in reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Nice. He's not exaggerating about that mortal danger. Just calmly factoring it in. Your fists clench and your pulse rises uncomfortably. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them. Continue with our business. Thanks for telling me that game. I mean, Kim. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Um, what tasks did I have to be getting on with? Find money for rent and pay Gart. Find the murder weapon. Interview the Wild Pines rep. Could go do that. Ask Kim to tell you about the case. Huh. Yeah, maybe I should get Kim yes. tell me. Okay, tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Ah, uh, yes. The case brief you missed. Now I remember. Brief, yes, that sounds good. Three days ago, the RCM emergency desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in Rags Hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. So the body had been up there for a week before Harry cut it down? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's... Yes. Yes. Um... I'm realizing now actually this is a good summary for people who haven't played the game and maybe haven't seen the previous stream, so I will actually go through this. Um, why didn't we know anything about the caller? They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers' union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now oh, it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Or before he not cut it down. Um, in our case, uh, I actually aced the check first time for shooting it. So I, uh, yeah, I was able to just to just shoot the body down with Kim's gun. Um, let me just make this perfectly clear. Our job here is to find the killer. That's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you say this is a mysterious case? Hang on, here are the options. Can we go over the preliminary info again? Please don't vote for that one. Um, would you say this is a mysterious case? If we're from different, different precincts, why are we on the same case? Uh, or actually I have all I need for now. And vote. The beautiful tie. The tie is fantastic. The The tie is the best um, the addition they've made to the fully voiced... Uh, oh, pardon me. The fully voiced version is all the better for the horrific necktie. Would you say this is a mysterious case? No, it 
It's not a particularly mysterious case. Why not? The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. Okay, the options are... <laughs> the options are... I was thinking something otherworldly might be involved. You know, something supernatural. Or white male in his 40s. What more do you need? Or, personally, I think labor dis disputes are very mysterious. Or, okay, so the, so the case probably isn't mysterious, but could it be sexy? And you can vote. Okay. Okay, currently labor disputes are mysterious with winning out. Oh no, oh no. It's getting sexy. Okay, <laughs> okay, so the case probably isn't mysterious, but could it be sexy? There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was a... Cut this boring stuff off immediately. You know what this case is about. Um, okay, the options are... Maybe there's a young woman involved. Are you sure there's not some sex angle we should be considering? Or, oh, I guess that settles it then. <laughs> okay, are you sure there's not some sex angle we should be considering? Good point. Martinez is famed for its occult sex murder rights. We'll get on it immediately. The weary tone is the surest indicator that the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Wow, really? That's mega sexy. No, not really. <laughs> Was there anything else? He's basically challenging you to sex it up with some lurid twist. Don't <laughs> get right into it. Sit on it a bit. Then hit him with it. What the fuck? Uh, actually, I have all I need for now. Good. Oh, shit. Nothing leave. Hang on a second. That's quite, let's just do a quick save. I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna try this three times. That's all. I'm just gonna try this three times. Yes. I'm, this isn't gonna be a long save scumming, but I really, I really wanna try convince Kim there's a sexy dark mystery twist in the case. No spoilers in chat. I am kind of assuming people have played or don't mind spoilers at this point. This is a game that people seem to be a lot more fussy about. Uh, hold off, you can get bonuses on that check. Bonuses by getting chat to give me bonuses? Because I can do that through the integration. It's a Inland Empire. I don't know if that's... Anyway... People are generally very fussy about spoilers in this game, so I assume the people who are watching this stream now, at this point, uh, 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 are happy to. Happy, thank you for the raid, that's fantastic of you. Um, I'm gonna try this check. It's, 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 it's got a 50, 58 percent chance. Only banal things strike you. Fuck. At the core, you're a very banal. I'm just, I'm just going again. It's a white check, so no reason to hold off. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm still just gonna, uh, say like reload, reload, try it a couple of times here. Um, I know I spent a lot of time last stream doing like saves yes. coming to do the entertaining options. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm just literally doing like I said th three times on this one right now, and then you know we can retry it later if need be. What if I got you it? Did it? Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, um, what if you did it? Did what? The hanged man? Yes, you killed him. And then, as part of the plan, you drowned out the memory. Uh... Maybe this is why your chest feels so hollow. You did an awful thing. And you can't even bring yourself to acknowledge it. Um, <laughs> those, uh, who just joined us, we are currently... Oh my goodness, Andy, thank you so much. <laughs> Deeply competitive. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much. You're a doll. That's the best of you. Um, um, 
I was just going to say to everybody, uh, we are doing a fundraiser, like Andy just donated to. Thank you again so much, Andy. Um, uh, and you can access it with exclamation mark and then tip. And uh, it's just for new PC parts and recording equipment that I need. Uh, okay, let's go. Oh, and we're playing Disco Elysium, which is a detective game. Um, made by communists. <laughs> Are you sure you would have the strength to take down a hardened mercenary? You're not in the best shape. Okay, here are our options. Uh, Kim, I think I may be the murderer. I killed the man and then I tricked myself into forgetting about it. Or, keep it to yourself, this is your burden to bear now. Or, what nonsense, discard the idea. And vote! burden to bear for honor. <laughs> okay. Alright, we'll try it. Kim, I think I may be the murderer. And what has led you to this conclusion? Uh, okay. Either my chest feels hollow like I did something terrible, or I'm a bad person I believe I could have done anything. What do we think? Pals, what do we think? Okay. All right, I'm I'm a bad person. I believe I could have done anything. Ah, well, we've yet to find any real evidence pointing to you in this case, or even a possible motive. So let's not add you to the list of suspects just yet. So you're saying I didn't kill him? I find that highly unlikely. It's not unusual for detectives to feel complicit in a crime until the perpetrator is apprehended, especially when the investigation is dragging. So let's get back to it, shall we? Oh, that was disappointing. I thought that convincing Kim that there was a sexy dark twist would be a lot more interesting than that. Okay. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. Kim always sounds so tired of our shit. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, could he not be? Is there any reality in which he wouldn't be? <laughs> Imagine a version of the story from Kim's point of view and he has to put up with it. Yeah, like you're playing as Kim and your partner's just this fucking insufferable piece of shit. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. It must be his name. Garanzi. Garanzi Kubek. Sounds representative. Okay, the options are... Ah, oh, Garanzi, I have some questions to ask. Mr. Kubek, I'm here on official police business. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions or ignore him. Um... What was I gonna say? Well, that's just fallen out of my head entirely. That's a shame. <laughs> okay. Hello, sir. Got some. T got time for a few questions. The man puts his cup down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. Uh. <laughs> okay. Either you got some impressive pots there, or I don't need. I don't think I need anything else. Stay mas. Stay masculine. What the fuck? Why is Harry so fucking weird? <laughs> okay. Um, Alright, it's looking like a win for you got impressive pots. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. Fascinating. Okay, well, that's the end of that. <sighs> Such a strange boy, Harry. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. The mind of Harry is truly an odd place. Absolutely. Okay, uh, touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Try to push on the door. The door does not budge. I wonder where this door leads. You do? 
It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Um, out of duty, we may find something pertinent to the investigation. Mm, yes, I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough, as a side investigation. Yes, a mini side investigation. Gart is the person to ask about this, the cafeteria manager. The narrator's voice is so strangely pleasant and hypnotizing. Yeah, it certainly is, isn't it? All right, let's go ask Gart then. Can I help you? Uh, about my bill for tonight, for I have right now. the money. The How okay. could anyone forget, asshole? <laughs> okay, um... God, I saw another thing at the Whirling. Another thing. Great. I love those. Um, that's strange. They shouldn't have this dialogue option here now that I can go into the kitchen. Anyway, there's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh, yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. All right. Uh, so we can either say, "I think you," I think you'd like to know what's back there, or we can say, or, or we can let him uh, get to pretend he's indifferent. Blue is the color of mystery. Hundred percent votes so far for. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Oh, okay, it's splitting. Somebody split the vote. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, awesome agreeb. I don't know if I'm misreading this. Anyway, thank you so much for that twelve pound donation. That's very much appreciated. Ah, you've rounded it out to a nice hundred and fifty. Thank you so much. All right, I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes. All right, nice. Okay. I'm gonna walk straight out past them right now, because I want to go to the bookshop. Because I realized that actually last stream I didn't go and get a, um... I didn't go get a map, which was probably a mistake. Close enough with pronouncing it. Thank you for doing what you do. I'm so sorry. How should I... Is it... Orsimo? Is that it? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. <laughs> okay, we can ask what a book is, we can ask what a postcard is, we can ask what a board game is. Or, uh, we can, we can just know these things. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, I know all these things. What's a board game? What's a bledio blames? Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. Interesting, thanks. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Uh, no. <laughs> A good one. Point at the book. Yes? Hello? Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Good, good. Nod. Phenomenal. Or I'm a policeman.
Good, good nod. It is. <laughs> I'm a policeman. I know you are. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? Maybe your husband is missing. My husband? No, he's not. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Watch her browse books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. An array of neurons fire up with joy. Bum her a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. Do you smoke? No, I don't. <laughs> I know for a fact that you smoke. Why do you think that I smoke? Um, it's the kind of place where everyone's where everyone does. You're right. We do smoke worse than chimneys here. <laughs> Just give me a cigarette, please. I already told you, I don't have any. Go bother someone else. She's lying. She's goddamn lying. She has smokes. Do you know where I could get a pack? From the kiosk? There's one near the harbor. It's a uh, frita. You can look it up. <laughs> Just give me your cigarettes, okay? Don't lie. Sorry, officer. Okay, thanks. No problem. She sighs. I'm the leaving. Woman before you. Okay, that was bad. That was a bad time. I have to flee. I'm fleeing the scene right now. That was awful. <laughs> okay. Okay. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome. And please, take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck, in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head trapped in amber. Huh. The voicing really does add a lot. It's really fun. It's just, re it's just really fun. Um, before we go on, you seem to be you're well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there won't be an opportunity, op opportune moment to ask later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Son, you got destroyed there. What <laughs> an idiot you are. Oh, that's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. I can't believe that just happened. That's fucked up. Uh, curious pendant you're wearing. Oh, yes. Helps to have an anchor in these times. Shut up. <laughs> uh, she destroyed you in the marketplace of ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work tragic. Uh, what if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? See those shelves there? Go. Be drawn. So what types of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? She's attempting to mentally direct you towards the shelves. She only wants you to buy the goods. She doesn't care about the books. Do you even know what kind of books you have for sale? Truth be told, not really. My sister brings in most of the goods. I'm sure it's all very literary stuff with well-written prose. But you don't learn about the important things in life from fabricated stories. The truth is available if you just know where to look. And you have to open and free your mind to understand. All right, I'll take a look then. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Uh, who's the little girl standing outside? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? <laughs> yes, of course. No, she was definitely slacking off. Or it doesn't matter now. Tell me something else. What do we want to do? <laughs> Technically, a bookshop is a marketplace of ideas. No, that's true. That's a good point. 
Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Why not? What? I, sh- I... Was she not friendly enough? Were you not compelled to talk to her? I was afraid she'd call me a faggot like all the kids around here. Sir, watch the language. My child would never do such a thing. Um, I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labour. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Oh, I guess I was mistaken. Indeed. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Hmm. I think I should arrest her and Harry and Kim should be Annette's new dads. The woman before you, Skip. All right. Let's go look at some books. A small mountain of colorful board yes. games. Yes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack. Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says Wirral, 3rd edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Nonsense for anemic Beano clouds. All right, now that my fascist inner voice has complained about it, I have to buy it. <laughs> I'm buying it. If you say so, but you better stay away from those immoral occult rituals. Oh my god, she's such a loser. All right, let's go upstairs. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen. Over and over. Look through the books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. I'm totally an anemic being a clad. Well, I don't wear glasses, but I was just prescribed uh, vitamin D uh, after my last doctor's appointment uh, two days ago. I, <laughs> She said to me, <laughs> She said to me, um, vitamin D deficiency is like an endemic problem among trans people because, shockingly, we don't go out very much, um, compared to the rest of the population. And, um, yeah, apparently you want it to be around 70, anything less than 40 is considered a, like a, a, a vitamin D deficiency, and I have 18, which she clearly saw as impressively low. Uh, she said, congratulations, you're trans. <laughs> Uh, I had some good news though. She's she's bumped my estrogen up slightly, so I'm I'm getting slightly more girl pills uh, from my next prescription, which is kind of nice. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Getting D and estrogen, what more can anybody want in life? <laughs> um, I was trying to, uh, yesterday I was talking to, talking to a friend about uh, vitam the vitamin D thing and then I started looking up uh, vitamins A, B and C because I... Uh, I realized that as well as the vitamin D, I've actually had to, um, I've had, to, I've had to order some vitamin E because vitamin E cream helps with stretch marks. I've been getting some stretch marks as my, as the HRT has been working. Um, and, um, I want the, them to not get worse at least. Um, but, um, yeah, then I was like, maybe I can, I can have the full alphabet. I can, I can make sure I'm getting all, all the vitamins. 
uh, other than Spyro. Uh, I'm actually not on Spyro, I'm on Finasteride, um, which is prescribed... Which, uh, Spyro Nalactone gets prescribed, but gets over-prescribed by American doctors, um, even though its side effects can be quite severe. Uh, and I think it has something to do with the FDA and lobbying, honestly, because the alternatives seem frankly better so for sorry for everyone who uh sorry sorry for uh <laughs> afabs and cis people uh but i i um as dr as dr kropotkin delivers his festive winter gifts which shake like a bowl full of jelly jesus christ <laughs> good description thank you andy <laughs> Speaking of those festive winter gifts, I'm considering doing a um, Lady Demistrachu uh, cosplay soon, and I was going to play Resident Evil 8 when that comes out uh, in the cosplay. I thought that would be a really fun kind of big stream event. That's what I'm considering doing. Um, HRT Tangent. Uh, Spyro is over-prescribed by a lot of American doctors, uh, even though like the side effects, you can, you can have brain fog, uh, sometimes dizziness, forgetfulness, depression... Um, and breast reduction, which is like fucking not the shit that you want for HRT. Um, so a bunch of people have been, uh, really annoyed as they've been finding out about that. Uh, Morgan says, I'm considering asking my doctor for spiral alternatives. I think it's affected my energy levels pretty severely. Yeah, exactly. It, it, uh, like, um, doctors massively over prescribe it as a, as the T blocker. Uh, I'm on finasteride. Uh, I'm having a great time with it. Um, a lot of people think it's kind of an unusual uh, combination, um, but for me, it's working great. It's it's I'm I'm personally like being non-binary. I don't really mind so much about suppressing my T like right down, and uh, my my T levels are like slightly above the um like the the female range for testosterone. But I'm okay with that. Um, and um, and the the testosterone that my that the finasteride blocks like converts into estrogen in my bloodstream anyway because your, your body does that that's just really cool, um, which by the way is a side effect that um, trans masks get in the in the US because uh, US doctors often uh, prescribe going straight from sort of zero to a hundred with HRT rather than trying to mimic like a curve. And so um, they'll prescribe a whole bunch of testosterone and then trans masks in the US have a really common problem of taking all that testosterone and it, their body is like, oop, that's too much, turning it into estrogen. So they end up with more estrogen. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, finasteride, um, avoid Cypro. I know that because it's uh, synthetic, uh, all like synthetic hormones are just really bad for you in terms of blood clots and tumors. Um... Lupro, I think, is 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 usually pretty good. I'm trying to remember right now, but Andy knows more than I do anyway. Um Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Sure thing. You see Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Rich. Okay. A killing is declared. Oh my god, that's so many. Dick Mullen in the murder house. Okay, let's Shelves stop. Filled to the brim with crime novels. Feature. Okay, I'm done. I don't want any Dick Mullen stories. That's quite enough of that. It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. <laughs> the plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. HRT is magic, but magic can back backfire. Yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, look through the display of books. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love. The tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love 
chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called the Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse though, but not too long. Ah. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Damn, that's a day. His eyeballs must be a nightmare. Absolutely. Alright, let's let's try and shoplift the map. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the You can alcohol. shoplift the map They're here, um, small pins. or if you the fail, then you can just buy it. I think it's I think it's pretty cheap anyway, so it's not a big deal. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of... In it's not really a map. It's a tool. Still, it's deep. I'm sorry, they're quite valuable. Though they might... That old thing? From when some designs... Alright, it's only 90 cents. It didn't get that far. For some reason. Let's... Steal it. The project never got going. You peek at Stalky. Yes. You're now the proud yes. owner of a map of yes. Martinez, which, <laughs> to be honest, did not even cost that much. Yeah, but I still succeeded a dice roll, and succeeding dice rolls feels good. <laughs> shiny, shiny pebbles make a gob goblin brain happy. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Ooh. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Ah. Uh. Fuck. <laughs> oh, interesting. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. What? I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh my god. She's so weird. <laughs> All right. Oh, I was just telling the editing stream about this before, but I know some people are here who weren't earlier. I'm doing a another watch party soon in my Patreon Discord. The last one I did was the Matrix sequels with Sarah Zedek, who is my co-writer on the Matrix sequels are good actually, so you can see why that happened. But we're going to do another one uh, on the 17th? 18th? Ah, oh, balls, I can't remember anything. <laughs> Why is my brain so bad? <laughs> Why is my brain rubbish? Um, on the 18th, I checked it, there we go. On the 18th, uh, we're going to watch Johnny Mnemonic. And when I say we, I mean Jack Saint and I are going to um, watch and do commentary. Um, basically the way the watch party works, like if you're in the Patreon Discord, which it's $5 plus patrons can be in the, in the Discord. Um... Folks can join as um, join, but like muted, and then sort of my the sort of stream guest I have and I can like watch and com commentate on the stream, um, and then there'll be a separate channel for like before and after, just hanging out. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundai somewhere uh look through the display of books rows and rows of him dalamin blur your vision you make out some titles man from Hyamdal and the mammoth riders man from Hyamdal return to Hyamdal 
and the solipsistic man from Hyomdal and the Hyomdal man. <laughs> uh, good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyomdal and the false god. Man from Hyomdal and the scorched earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the swamp beast. Man from Hyomdal and the snow crabs. Wow. Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. Is that all? Not even close. Oh my god. Man from Hyomdal. Oh my god. Man from Hyomdal <laughs> and the forest of slaves. No. Man from Stop. Under the lake. Man from Hyomdal. Hyomdal burning. <sighs> There's even the trial of death. A pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yondalaman, and so much more. <laughs> Such beautiful pulp. All right, pain threshold. Do any of the books call out to me? A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Oh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Yondal in chains. Kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala and the Devil Woman. Okay, you can vote between the options. Aren't all women devil women? Or interesting? <laughs> Come on, ladies, what's it gonna be? <laughs> okay. Aren't all women devil women in the lead? Lots of devil women in chat today. I was gonna say, does this book exist? I've got a crisp five pound note. <laughs> it's, um... It's funny, like, that's such good writing for that, because I feel like it's so accurate, like, we all know, like, pulp, pulp books have such, um, have such, um, uh, just, like, psychosexual, like, marketing styles of just, like, yeah, the big, the big muscly dude in various situations, and then, like, it works so well for, like, Harry and what his character is, that he's just, like, which one? Do any of them call to me? And he's, like, in pain and the book that calls to him is like <laughs> the woman in charge is especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini ah classic there's yeah also some sort of a snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen chest shoulder region ah yeah sounds like a stacy the display rack before you is burdened under piles of man from here down novels all right. Well, I'm buying. I'm buying that. That sounds essential. It is a bestseller for a reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, Woman from Hjelmdal, the call of Estradiel Valorate. Nice. Okay. Hang on. What's this? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Uh, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Examine the strange cage-like trinket. Pull open the curtains or ignore the curtains for now and leave. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Any anything can happen. What do we want to do? <laughs> oh... Pull open the curtains is in the lead. Okay. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? 
uh, man, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Or, but I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. Or, I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. Continue. Or, all right, I'll think about it for a while. Continue. <laughs> wow, strong feelings in chat already. Okay, uh, I can feel this place calling to me as an elite at the moment. Looks like that's getting it. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Okay, with that with that op that option exhausted, where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I'll open them. No. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here. Lies. Rip them open, we see. There is something mysterious. You see a tattered set of curtains and a poly... Get in. Let's get in there. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you. You're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Here we go. Oh, baby. Is that a head? Oh, it's a poster, right? <laughs> Vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. <laughs> Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if you just break it down? Um, maybe I should break it down, but not before I strategize. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. First, check your posture. Steady breathing. Solid core. You've got this. With one shoulder forward, you're ready to smash into the door like a battering ram. Check your surroundings. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish. But the path to the door is clear. And what about the door? It's made of a solid block of wood, but it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with a carmine layer of rust. It should be doable. Shall I do it? I'm gonna do it. Oh, baby. Oh, that looked unpleasant. Oh, that looked unpleasant. Oh, no. Ow. Shoot. Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? Uh, please don't cry. Please don't cry. Slap your face. I don't want anyone to see me cry. Are you alright? This looked... Pretty intense and painful. <laughs> Tough day for him. Yeah, Detective Botfart is having a bad a bad day. I, by the way, I've decided to name Harry Detective Botfarts because um, he sucks. He's a stinky bad boy. He's just the worst. What is going on there? Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer. It barely looks like you've done any damage to the door, however. It's still locked and closed, covered in dozens of little charms and trinkets. Knock on the door. Only an echo. No one is there. Oh, fuck's sake. Alright, well, that was fucked. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. Oh, the hairdryer. A heavy door with a... Alright. Well, that's us for now. We're not getting in that door, I guess. Okay. Um, let's have a look in my interactable items. So interact with the board game Wirral. Large letters on the front form a title, Wirral. The colorful box is illustrated with bucolic vistas. The cover art also features odd-looking humanoids, some short 
some taller, some with pointy ears, others with ephemeral wings. Examine the box. Text underneath the title in smaller typeface reads, third edition, Mega Setting Supplements module. The side panel adds, a sword and sorcery adventure board game with new maps and miniatures. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Morrog, and good luck getting the getting the bimbo pills. Which actually reminds me, I need to take a pill in a minute. Um, shake the box. Mysterious things rattle inside. What could they be? Dice? Plastic miniatures? A fantastical alternate world full of magic and wonder? Look at the back. A blurb on the back reads, Tired of the tedium and toil of modern life? Escape to Wirau. Leave behind Isolas and nations with their petty squabbles. Discard electricity, magnets, and boring technological widgets. Succumb to a world of high pasternal fantastique. Unleash your imagination and create an adventure of endless possibilities. Discover the terrible secret threatening Wirau. Can your band of adventurers save the world? My milf pills are actually sugar coated, so they do they do have a taste. Um, yes, we're ready to take on this challenge. Exactly, that's the spirit. All you have to do is read an intricate rule book, study an assortment of maps, unfold the illustrated game board, and start rolling dice. It's true. It's such a fun game. In no time, you could be romping through grasslands with low-level characters. Hunted by Iskala riders, or battling unspeakable monsters in endless dungeons fraught with danger and despair, conjuring up forceful magics to aid your quest. Um, yeah, I'm gonna open the box. You pry open the box. Inside, you find a folded up map, a small booklet, a 24 sided. 24 sided? Guide, a little plastic figurine. Jeez, alright. Look at the map. A reprint of a crude hand-drawn map. The top left corner reads, Lands of Wirau. The map features both small villages and mid-sized towns with odd names. In addition to meadows, forests, hills, lakes and seas, also with odd names. It doesn't seem to correspond with anything you've seen thus far. It's not a very helpful map. Look at the booklet. A quick guide to the magical races of Wirau. Create your own hero. I feel like I'm being threatened with a good time. It does seem, I'm, I'm just like, oh, did they make Wirau though? Does it exist? Did they make Wirau? The options are in order of importance. The Welkin, the Tweorg, the humans, the fairy folk, and the pygmies. Local detective found rummaging through D and D starter set in middle of street. Murder still unsolved. That's me if they tried to hire me as a cop. <laughs> yeah. Read about the Welkin. The Welkin, tall, lithe, and graceful, with long flowing hair and pointy ears. They're known for being powerful magic users, but can also hold their own in a brawn-driven fight. Pals, please remember we have a fundraiser going on. If you do the command exclamation mark tip, then you can tip to it to get us uh, help us get some new PC parts and recording equipment. That would be very helpful. Thank you in advance. <laughs> the Welkin come with a variety of exciting sub races: High Welkin, Forest Welkin, Lake Welkin, and Snow Welkin. But if you're not feeling experimental. A basic Welkin will always do. Read about the Dwayork. A grand race of industrious mountain people. They're short, stout, and muscular, and enjoy digging for gold and other precious minerals. They're also well versed in the art of combat, where they prefer to use axes and hammers. The Dwayork also come in a few different sub races. Hill Dwayork. Shield Tweorg and Dark Tweorg. Read about the humans, although I'm now concerned when the last thing was just about sub races. They're just humans. What else is there to tell? Ooh, okay. They're average in all stats and jacks of all trades. Yay for playing RPGs in my RPGs. It's that prehistoric meme. Yo, dog. <laughs> uh, read about the fairy folk. A very small race of flying people, known for being mischievous, full of trickery. They often lure people into their magical traps, 
there are no sub-races for the theories. Read about the pygmies. The least popular of the Wiral races, the pygmies, are short, rotund, and dim-witted. <laughs> pygmies live in small villages made of shoddy wooden <laughs> dwellings. They spend most of their days tilling the earth and smoking their pipes. Ah, there they're are hobbits. There no sub-races for the pygmies. Look at the die. It's made from some sort of wood and has been decorated with peculiar plant motifs. Cute. Take the die. You place the die into your pocket. It's always good to have luck on your side. That's very interesting. Look at the figurine. You see a man in ragged clothes wearing a lopsided hat and wielding some sort of a firearm. Huh, interesting. A communal. What? <laughs> Wait a second, what? There's a, there's a, okay. A communal, one of the leftist revolutionaries in the anti-centennial revolution. The figurine is not a part of the rural game city. Yeah, that's what I thought. I guess someone misplaced it during the packaging process. That's fun. Does this mean we can't play? I have a feeling the figurines are more there to set the scene than anything else. Take the figurine. You pick the figurine up by the base. To okay. meet your gaze, okay. the little plastic man stares back at you, his face contorted into a disturbing shout. Then you pocket it. Close the box. A colorful box with a... Put the box away. Done. Map of Martinez. The worn map features the patchwork grid. Your uh, finger uh, finally uh, comes... Uh, For more detailed view of... Uh, okay. I just wanted to get the map out of the way. Okay. All right, let's experience the man from Hjelmdal and the devil woman and see whatever kind of effect it ends up having on Harry Botfarts. <laughs> the edges of the pages Here we go, Detective Botfarts. Be brave a lot of against your greatest enemy yet, feminism. With the Hjelmdal man. One of the things I love most about this game is how everything is so well crafted to feel like you have Harry's Amnesia 2. Things you're super familiar with all have slightly two different names to really know what it is intuitively. It works so good. Yeah, I really like that too, and it's something that I want to talk about in my second video about Disco Elysium. Um, where I want to, I want to talk about um, its like approach to race and um, the way that it, it creates like racial categories that aren't quite, but are very representative of the real world. And traces like colonialism as a thing, and I don't know, it's it's super interesting. Look, bless you. Look at the back cover. The jacket copy proclaims, "Man from Hyomdar returns in his most exciting adventure yet." After crashing into a strange jungle, cannibalistic natives abduct his only surviving comrade, Noble Tiribold. Before Man from Hyomdar can mount a rescue. He is ambushed by a tribe of female warriors and taken to the ancient citadel of Cloud City, where a mysterious and wicked queen rules supreme. Will man from Hyeondal be able to escape his dire situation and find his missing friend? Time to flip through the book. You open the book to a random page. Man from Hyeondal wielding his two Zweihanders. His two Zweihanders. The sea of savages. <laughs> his visage fixed in grim determination. His arms whirling like windmills are soaked with the blood of his enemies. Mangled corpses litter the battlefield. You flip to the copyright page. This book was written in 38. Berserker rage burns in his azure-hued eyes as he brings glory and honor to his long-lost Hyamdala tribe from the village of Hyamdal. The ivory giant roars like an ice bear and the winds of Gatla howl out his name. Give me more. Man from Hyamdal rides on a gilded griffin, his golden mane billowing in the breeze. Both Zweihanders sheathed on his back he is off to war. Will he conquer his enemies? Will he conquer himself? Onward! The steel muscles of man from Yeomdal gleam in the humid jungle air. Yet the man does not sweat. What? In meditation, his soul drifts in the frigid northlands he calls home. Pulling a Prince Andrew move here. 
A passage reads, The man from Hyeongdao looks up, his eyes blue as the mountain lakes of his homeland. He rarely speaks, but now his voice booms in the darkened throne room. Do not try to sap my masculine essence, wicked temptress. Oh my god. Son of Yeldal will never succumb to your seductive wiles. Thine spells are no match for purity and strength of Oh will. my god. Brothers of Yeldal, stand above the vices of flesh, for it is weak and corruptible, yet mine is forged in gore and strife. Can I take Queen this? Queen Lidiana just laughs, a sultry and salacious sound, then says, Can I take this moment to point out that NoFap November was started by fascists as a way to recruit people into uh, ideas about like uh, uh, traditional sexuality and relationships and that like women trying to seduce them are uh, trying to sap their masculine essence and all this shit because like that's why the Proud Boys and like all the Nazi cults don't masturbate that's the same thing um, I just wanted to it's something I've, I've pointed out in the stream before and people are usually very surprised when I point this out NoFap November is a fascist thing um uh this this shit right here is is written by somebody who understands that <laughs> i have grand plans for you man from hyomda she gestures her diabolical hand toward an array of potions and unguents first you shall please me then lead my armies against the vicious cannibals not a muscle moves in the face of the man from hyomda yet inside there is turmoil this goes against all he holds sacrosanct. Wow, this is epic. In the final pages, man from Hyeongla mounts Galavarin, his mighty griffin, and turns his gaze to the horizon. Queen Lydiana is dead, but an army of cannibals is storming the gates, and still there's no word of trusty Tyrabald. To find out what happens next, you'll have to pick up Man from Hyeongla and the Three-Eyed Skull. Okay. Available in fine bookstores everywhere. Go. Spring 39. Put the book away. Okay. I think I got through it all. 24-sided die. That's not a 24-sided die. Come on. Ah, there's my little communard. There he is. Oh, do I have points? Oh, nice. Okay. Um, what do I want some points in right now? Oh, pain threshold, and I can try the door again. Nice. Accept and close. Let's go try that door again. NoFap is just the anti-sex brigades from 1984, but make it more grassroots. Yeah. All right, let's knock down this door. Come on. Come on, you got this. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you. Please. In dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. No! It to be locked. Fuck. God damn it. What the fuck? Ow. Shoot. Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? I deserve this. My body deserves to suffer for being this weak and disappointing. Are you alright? What is going on there? All I right. warn you, don't tempt the... All it right. really looks like you've done any damage to the door, however. It's still locked. God damn it, I leveled up pain threshold and everything. Now I need to heal myself. Oh. <laughs> well, that was awful. Okay. Let's go over to the um, the pawn shop next. Let's pawn some stuff. In about 10 minutes I'm going to take a break and go take a milk pill and get a glass of water and stuff like this. And other people should do the same. Uh, no matter what, take a milk pill. <laughs> no choice, just do it. You have to. <laughs> uh, maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. Um, anyway, uh, there'll just be like a... Five ten minute break. In in ten minutes.
What did I just say? Okay. A crumpled billboard reading, Samaran butter soaks in the canal. Two ugly lines mar the bright countenance of the blonde boy depicted. What is Samaran butter? Whatever it is, the boy on the billboard seems very happy about it. Hmm. Nothing more to see here. I'm going to do a quick save on this one. I'm, I'm just going to give the, this one a couple of goes. Why can't I click it again? The hell? What? Oh, it locks you out after the first one? I didn't know that. Alright, everyone, I guess I'm not trying that one again. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, fingerless gloves. Baby. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. People seem to really underestimate what I'm talking about a lot of the time, and it's very irritating. But it's like specifically on 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 Twitter, and I it's it's partly just Twitter because it's because it's Twitter, you know how it is, like, but, um, it totally just, like, I, I, I posted this thing that I, a few of the research sources I've been reading recently kind of seem to imply something, um, and I can't find anything either, like, outright saying it, nor anything that would disprove it, which is this, I, this, which is that, that there's a trope, right, of, like, um, um, it might not have looked you out. Alright, I'll go, I'll go try it again just now. Um, a trope of like wa werewolves and vampires hating each other in stories. And I, <laughs> and the thing that is, is kind of implied, but neither claimed nor disproved, is that the Nazis started that. As in, vampires being anti-Semitic propaganda, that's a very old thing. The Nazis, because they were obsessed with ancient Rome, like to paint themselves as wolves. Hey, it hasn't locked me out. Nice. Um, a crumpled billboard reading, just some uh, taste. Um, so I tweeted about this saying, like this thing of vampires and werewolves hating each other. Uh, it it feels like pe you know I, I'm trying to find out because it, I can't I can't seem to like find this or proof or disproof, and like um, a crumpled billboard reading, just and um. I'd like to find proof or disproof. Either way, I just want to close the case on that one, basically. But it's like, everyone keeps on fucking interpreting what I'm saying as did Nazis start the trope of uh, using vampires as an anti-Semitic proxy? And it's like, fucking, no, that's not what I... Of course, that's, like, fucking, no, of course that's way older than that. Of course they didn't fucking come up with that, like... No. <laughs> and no, that's not what I'm saying. Like, I just, it just, it's very frustrating because I'm trying to make a more, like, well, I, I'm trying to make what I think is a way more interesting point that isn't immediately just, like, obviously wrong. And everyone, <laughs> it feels like everyone reading this tweet is just, like, a just can't see the words reading. that I'm saying. Samaran butter. Just. It's very frustrating, anyway. I'm going to give this one more go and then I'm going to carry on and just go to the pawn shop. Um... But yeah, it's just like, come, come on. <laughs> uh, I love the vampire masquerade slash werewolf the apocalypse interaction that werewolves are indigenous to vampires. Tremere especially are an extension of the Euro ruling class. Um, you expect people on Twitter to read the whole tweet? It's just really frustrating because it's like a whole bunch of people who just... I know would find it more interesting to talk with me about the thing I'm actually saying instead of like a, a made up thing I'm saying in their mind and it's just ugh, I hate Twitter I just hate Twitter because it's like I have this great big audience and I can go and have a I could uh, Twitter is like Twitter is like close enough to a, a situation Google. where you so should be able to have to go and have an interesting conversation with people that it like tempts you like that. It's tantalizing, and then it's 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 just far enough away, right? Like it's 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 just close enough 
But then when you actually try and do that, everyone's just the fucking worst. Just every, just everyone's just the fucking worst. <sighs> Alright. Now one more time. This is the last time. <laughs> um, yeah, that's an interesting thing in Vampire Masquerade and Werewolf the Apocalypse. I'm considering... I'm probably going to play Werewolf the Wild West um, at some point on the podcast, by the way. Just... Kind of excited about that. This is literally the Twitter experience. You People love to answer questions you never asked. Yeah, and it's but it's just like... I just think that's an interesting, a really interesting question that is, again, not backed up, but implied by several sources I've come across. Just some taste, whatever And I just it is. fucking want to know, and no. I just want to, I want to have that conversation, and no one wants to have that conversation. Nah. 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 Wild West Werewolf, fuck yeah. Nice. Um, I'm considering, like, I'm gonna get copies of Werewolf the Apocalypse and Werewolf the Wild West, um, and probably gonna play something that's kind of half and half between them. So it might be like a future wild, like a future apocalyptic Wild West or whatever. Because like most apocalypse stories are Western stories anyway in genre. They're just the, they're just the same thing basically. Typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. How much for the streetlight? Seven hundred real. A bargain, I dare say. There's no way you can get seven hundred real in this game. Werewolf the climate apocalypse. A now you're, bargain? Now you're speaking no, my language. No, it's not. He's trying to sweet talk you into buying trash. <laughs> um. You out of your mind? There's one just like that on every street corner. The light has undergone three transformations, and every transformation, large or small, has a price tag. Wow. Um... Well, there are the costs of removal and rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a All right, that's very boring. Um and I don't have 700 real. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented. They stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box that says Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Um... Is the Harman Welsh W2, made in Vespa, designed in Seoul? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with record. If police were like a beach party, with sand and <laughs> theoretically, sand. could I bring it to a beach party? Theoretically, yes, but we don't have time right now. It's generally murder investigation first, then beach party. Actually, it doesn't have to be a beach. With a boombox like that, I'll bring the party into the streets. You can play it any way you like. And I guess since you're a police officer, I think no I'm gonna one can arrest you for it. I think I'm gonna buy the boom box. And here you are. Quality yes. sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything. Yes. Wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> You see rows of toys sold. Yeah, Try right. to find something pretty and cool here. Then he... Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. Oh, that's the headless phone rider. Of course, no, not knowingly. There's been a lot of interest in that particular figurine. 
I had to hide it so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. He doesn't elaborate on these wrong hands. It's unlikely that he ever will. <laughs> okay. I've heard about it. I've heard the headless phone rider ride the headless bull. Yes, there are several competing versions of the story, but I believe this figurine is a more canonical representation. Uh, sorry, what are we talking about again? The headless phone rider. It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a phone tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Yeah, I got that from cents. the name. Bargain. Oh, 50 cents? Don. Don. That Don. Very smooth sales Don. That almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. Win her back. Yes. Buy something nice. A figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Big men on big horses. Frank or Nigeria. What long, am I doing? Long. I don't want this. All right. Let's go talk to the guy. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. All right. We'll do some voting on dialogue options, and I'm going to take a 10 minute break. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls. Wow, mood. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Or, shake your head, it's shameful how insufficient the police pre presence is in these parts. Or, now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? Vote, baby! It's time to vote! It's voting time! It's it's happening now! Let's vote! Let's do it! Mm, okay. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. Oh, this guy's the voice of the, um... The Limbic system, isn't he? I knew I, I recognized him from somewhere else in the game. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Okay. Quite the collection indeed, or typical vacuous consumerist objects, or honestly, I think some of your selections are more tasteful than others. Press your finger to your lips? Strange. Or this business plan is all over the place. You should specialize, zoom in, recapitalize. What the fuck? What the fuck is that about? <laughs> right, it looks like we're going with typical vacuous consumerist objects. Oh, it switched to the last second. Honestly, I think some of your selections are, press your finger to your lips, more tasteful than others. It keeps me entertained. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Is Roy high, and if yes, then what's he on? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. He's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Parolidon? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects. Uh. And it makes your eyes turn yellow. Oh. So, um, is it just me or is it really warm in here? Look around. Or... Step closer, sir, could you take off your sunglasses? I'd like to check your eyes. Or, get straight to the point, sir, where does a man get paroled on these days? <sighs> Is it not letting you vote? Because I'm not seeing vote percentages coming up right now. Is it not letting you, you guys vote? I'm going to hit the vote button again. Or I'm not gonna, because it's not letting me. Sorry, pals, this is really weird. There's some sort of error with it. I'm gonna go straight to the point, where does a man get paroled on? How would I know? There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. Um... 
chill out, man. I'm a chill out cop who just wants some of what you're having, wink. Proledon is just something I, you know, since the People's Power disaster. <laughs> I was with the Emergency Relief Brigade. Had to take it for radiation sickness. He's taken it for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. The people's pile? What's that? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste <laughs> everywhere. Probably some of it in you too. Tell me about tell me more about this emergency relief brigade you are part of. We were an all volunteer force, self organized. Tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. Tough son of a gun, this one. Respect. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. Jesus Christ. Must have been tough radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. An early death. Cancer mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? This is an interesting question with Chernobyl in mind. Chat, whose fault was it that the generator failed? Please answer the question for me. I'm curious to see what you all say. No one's. Everyone's. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor. Hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? How did you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So right. I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said people... We just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Thank you for Still, telling me. Bye. I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Um, you care to share your parole with me? Have you tried it before? It's almost like he's worried for you. The lieutenant steps away. Pretending to admire some of the knickknacks on display. Go ahead then, he thinks. As long as you can walk straight, I don't care. I haven't, but don't worry, I can take it. If you say so, here you okay. go, Okay. Yes, darling. That's the coalition government ordained Parolidon. Straight into your gut. Okay. Not so sure about this. Thanks, man. Take the Parolidon. <laughs> of course. Nice. Um, the boombox I bought, it should play this tape, right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. Great. Let I want to sell a... something. Um, I'd like to sell my clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. Fucker. And especially that tie. It swallows <laughs> photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Nice. Your mother is a necrotic object. <laughs> I'm fun. Look at me sparkling in the light of the projector. Uh, I'll check my pockets. Access your porn menu. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Um, I'm going to sell this postcard. And this postcard. And this photo of a happy couple, I guess. That's sad. Yeah, and the lieutenant's hand handkerchief. <laughs> And I think that's it, because I like all the other stuff. Um, 
I'm not gonna sell my my 24 sided die. Um, I don't have anything to sell. Hang on a sec. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Show them the show them the oh, photo. No, I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. Do you know what the tattoos mean? A photic path, counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. I don't have anything to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the Wild, pri wild Pines representative that's in town? Can't say I'm a huge admirer of Wild Pines. And I can't say I trust any silver-tongued spokesperson of theirs. Fortunately, I have no reason to get involved. Have you met the Wild no, Pines representative? just... People like that make everyone else see the world somewhat askew, at an angle that is convenient for them. Now, you have more questions, or Any are we... Ugh. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance. All no right. one likes to see what you have. To the right. broker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colours. By the way, by the way, do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by officers of the citizens militia? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. Eee. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. What? Sold? The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You uh We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. I mean... <laughs> and I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. You weren't quiet. Yourself. Officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and... Oh, jeez. When I said that I don't normally... You oh. said my gun. Good. Very normal. Say nothing. The light swells in his face and glasses. He doesn't Was know the buyer a policeman either. too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I sold my gun. <laughs> Yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow. This mess? He means your mess. Of course. All right. All right. We're done now. We're done with that now. Okay. Uh, uh, I said like 15 minutes ago I was gonna take a, I was gonna take a break. So I'm gonna take a break now. I'll leave you all with a little bit of jazz, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. So here's the self-care message. The message reads, Drink water, take any medication you need, remember to eat what you can, breathe however you can, and stretch if you're able to. You're loved very much, you're valid, and people here care. And I'm going to go take a milk pill, and I'll be back in ten, like I said. Uh, and enjoy this jazz.
Alright folks, how are we doing? I think I want to go for another hour and then call it quits. Um, I've, got, I've still got some filming to do tonight before I before I can wrap up and I have to... Uh, actually, I have some filming and then I have some editing and then I have to export it and send it to somebody um, before I can wrap up today. So I, I, I think I want to go for just another hour and then, um, and then call it. Alright, let's turn off the jazz now. Okay. Um, tools. Pyrolodon. Substance use effects. Plus one psyche. Huh. What does my psyche do? Interesting. Hmm. Whoa! In your hand, Parolidon, the double rainbow of synthetic hallucinogens, rare and gritty, a product of the age of atomic power. Look at the little pack of liquid. What a funny little cat. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to boredom. Open the cap. The container is warm to the touch. Or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. A little slit on the side lets you just slurp it up like an oyster. Come on, slurp it. Slurp it, but only a little. You suck a minuscule drop of extremely chemical smelling liquid into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. Okay, okay, chat. Does it taste like fire? Taste like a kiss? Taste like, or taste like gasoline? Or taste like an anti-radiation drug? Vote now <laughs> to decide what Pyrolodon tastes like. You're so boring. <laughs> You're just immediately like, yeah, it's an anti-radiation drug. All right, all right, all right, pals. It fine. tastes like fine. many things, all melting into one conflagration mm -hmm. in the back of your throat. Nice. As you look around, the world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges, as though it were a photo burning. Oh God! On fire? Not really. It's just a metaphor. The effect of that otherworldly drop of liquid is slower, more subtle than that of real flames, yet just as warm. I voted kiss. Oh, I'm sorry, Top Hat Viking. I'm sorry that you're more imaginative and interesting than these dullards. <laughs> this warmth. It makes you want to share your discovery with Kim. Okay. Kim, I just did a drop of that anti-radiation drug. It's great. Or, will I be able to sta stand straight and walk? Or, this is going to be so useful in my line of work, finish thought. We were all wrong. Let's wash the regret away with another sip. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so far it's uh, telling Kim about your experiences in the lead. Alright, we're telling Kim. Kim, I just did a drop of the anti-radiation drug. It was great. I'm happy for you. Wow. <laughs> His glasses turn golden as the fire reflects off the lenses. You feel this man is your brother. Wow. <laughs> just don't mix it with anything, he thinks, looking you over. Thankfully, his sense of balance seems okay. Whatever. I'm not getting involved. Wow. Kim's badass. Or he's had a druggy partner. Whoa. That's probably it. He's seen it before. Look at all these guys go off like fireworks as information pours into you. About the lieutenant's simple remark. I'm happy for you. This stuff is great. This is so much. The writing of this is so good. Will I be able to stand straight and walk? Why not? This government developed substance seems very non-intrusive. You could even operate heavy machinery. Fire machinery. The narrator to this is so good. 
This is going to be so useful in my line of work. Already you can tell you're going to be sloping a lot more Parolidon. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human beings. My god. If you can keep the vomit in. Because it sort of also makes you want to throw up. Oh no! In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a Parolidon button. All oh, right now. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, tutorial voice. Gosh. All right. See ya, Baramon. Hope you have an okay shift. Okay, I uh, I had a level up, by the way, so I've increased my pain threshold again. We're going to try battering that door down once again, uh, just now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go! Okay. <laughs> a heavy door with a missing handle stands go! before you, covered in dozens if not hundreds of little body shaped trinkets. Final. Oh my god. It appears to be locked. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, what you the fuck? Smash though? into the wood and see a small <laughs> crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break no, through to the other side. Son of a bitch. But you've done it. No, stop doing this to me. You're not thinking of trying again. Smash into Are the you? door. Okay. Okay, you can all vote on what I say when I smash into the door again. Say nothing, say fuck the system, say freeze dirtbags, say hands up now, or say fuck it hurts. Vote now. Oh god. Alright, alright. Fuck the system currently leading. Alright, it's looking like fuck the system. Nice. Okay. Here we go. We did it. We did it, pals. How much health do you have? Like, how many smashes till he's dead? I have four health total. <laughs> I don't have loads of health. I don't. I, I don't. I don't have loads of health. This, this game is so good. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. <laughs> um, gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Kudos. Thought gained. Anti-object task force. Hmm. I don't have room to internalize this yet. It's annoying. <sighs> Take a look at your hands. See how bruised they are. Interesting. Or I'm gonna I'm gonna spend my next uh, skill point after this on on this so I can get so I can internalize this anti-object task force. Um, I need to heal. Okay. It's just so it's just so such a fucking clever thing to do in game design to make your character like this awful wreck of a man who who will die if he just like tries too many physically exerting things. I'm gonna take this shot put ball. Why not? A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Why does it feel so familiar? It's familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. A memory from another life. All right, let's try when it. We were young and fit. Come on, lads. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, lads. <laughs> let's get that pump on. Okay. Don't fuck this up. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. This sucks. God damn it, Harry. No. No. You just fucked it up immediately. You managed to hoist it off the ground. <sighs> but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick, which All even right. your body has failed you. It's a miracle you Fuck you, you stupid barbell. 
Weightlifting was never my favorite either. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. Clears your head. Well, that sucked. <laughs> okay. What is this place? Um, looks like a gym to me. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Thanks, Detective Tutorial. An airy feeling rises in your chest. Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Sounds good. Oh, I'm equipping my torchlight. Mm. Thanks, kid. This is one of the, I think, one of the best bits of the game, in my opinion. Like, it is really spooky in here. Uh, and there isn't anything dangerous. It's just, it's just really spooky. It's just a spooky little place. That's good. Oh, I'll take that money. Thank you. Yup. More money? Fuck yes. Production schedule. Filament memory. Oh, baby. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have my boom box. What am I doing? <laughs> Oh wait, I thought I had tapes. Do I not have tapes? I thought I had one already. Well, tragically I don't have tapes, never mind. Let's get the crowbar again then. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Hey, Sophie, just watched the new prem the premiere of the new Philosophy Tube video. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, inspect the drawings. Inspect the photos. All right, let's start there. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types. Of Welkins. Oh baby, here we go. Candle Welkins, here we go. Wax-based magic, translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. This looks like an enormous improvement on the classic we're out setting, much more advanced, light years ahead. One of the Welkins, towering among the rest appears to be different however examine the welkin this is important it's vara hamira a high welkin his face white and scarred like cracked marble this is clearly a welkin supremacist the note <laughs> says all non-welkin races will be purged oh fuck the haldor the twarg the humans and even headless men all of them purged imagine a world filled only with welkin Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. Oh shit, the elves are Nazis. Joseph Anderson was fucking right. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they, are, are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. 
<laughs> nice. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. That's fun. And for what? All gone. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like <laughs> eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Continue. Everyone is constantly teetering on the edge of the abyss, an abyss of production. These squares look orderly, but beneath them is chaos, worry, pain. So much pain. Back pain, neck pain, headaches, carpal tunnel chest pain no gym membership can make up for working in this manner disco elysium said fuck crunch that's that's that <laughs> keep reading what happened as time goes on the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer the board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days only failure and regret dwell in this region right looks like they didn't make it a note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Oh my god. Dang. Okay. Wait a second, what's this? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. Uh -huh. A diagram for summoning some uh -huh. radio frequencies. It's uh -huh. unclear. It looks like a car. Uh -huh. The web is uh -huh. looks like a surveillance program. Uh -huh. Someone very important. Uh -huh. The leader of a massive on uh -huh. whoever decides to call in. Uh -huh. All of this is gone. Left uh -huh. now. Good. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. Because Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Let's look at this computer. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. Turn on the machine. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. Oh. That the sound design is so fun. That's wide open. That's so fun. Look inside the compartment. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's pl Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning. 
Fortress Accident en rue de saint -Gazelain. This is East in Flindian Repeat Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Um... What's the production schedule? <laughs> the filament you have inserted into the reader. Thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. You should ask her for a hint. A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to you the... I'm afraid fucker. we are not doing that. Unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fuck! That sounds bad. A login. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thank yeah, that's you. Enough. And good. Tiles on the cube are the filament slides out. Okay, I'm done. That's enough of that. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Looks like an undercover undercover counterintelligence program. No, that's not it. <laughs> I think it looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Yeah. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. Um, wow, conclude. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The world is cold and lonely. Let's... This would keep it company. Let's finish it. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. No! Okay, let's keep moving. Fucking rubbish. Garbage. God damn it, Kim. Yeah, money. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? I'm hallucinating. Wait, really? Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. It feels safe to know that the lieutenant's got your back, now and always. This sounded real, not imagined. Mm, I'm gonna leave. All right. I haven't got enough sa uh, enough health to be kicking the thing with my foot. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. Crack open the door. A gust of Baby. freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. Can I carry magic? This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. 
His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim, it's a fridge. Of course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. Let's take a look inside. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers, I guess. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The fridge buzzes. All right. That'll do. Bear, berry. Oh. Here we go. Here we go, baby. Baby. Okay. Let's get those guns, baby. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. Where are it's we? It's too dark. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. There's a hole in Must the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This one looks nice. Take the rifle. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Could the murder weapon we're looking for be similar? It's the same type of weapon, yes. A breech loader. An interesting coincidence that we should find something so similar. But I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. <laughs> nice. Okay, that's cool. Let me check out that thing. Ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. Let's go over to that shelf first. Get some more money, hell yeah. I'm gonna unplug. Two cables are plugged and electric something close. Why did you do that? Because it's black, the color of immeasurable cosmos. The lieutenant raises his brows. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kim. Why do you do things you do? Insane mesh tank top plus one to drama. <laughs> Uh, what did the note from the fridge say? I'll read. I'll read the uh, the items I've gained in a minute. Ice cream maker's been switched off. Hmm. Interesting. I thought this is an interactable thing. Both cable like somewhere. A machine hums along with the current. Um, it should be this here, but I can't interact with it. That's strange. Anyway. All right. Only the black cable is plugged into the break of Unplugged. something close. Why did you okay. do that? The lieutenant rate. Okay, now we'll leave through here. I love the insane mesh tank top, it's great. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Is it still raining? Hmm. Okay. Items. Let's de equip the torch now. Clothes, mesh tank top? Nah, I'll now nah, I'll, I'll wait until I've got like a good, a good like drama set. <laughs> um, where's my? All right. Here we go. The note from the fridge. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. 
The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Remind me again, what's a filament memory? Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. What? I'm a little surprised. It's just that's a plausible hypothesis. Oh, three. It right. belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. <laughs> Who's the illiterate ginger kiss? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. A what? Why am I pressing all the wrong buttons? Didn't you see a melting ice cream maker right next to the breaker box? Oh. Yeah, there you go. Really? You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Okay, there we go. Let's try the, um... Let's try the door again. Try the uh, ice cream maker. Now that, now that I've read the note about it, I should be able to interact with it, hopefully. I assume I've just got to leave it long enough to defrost, but like... This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. Oh my god. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? All right, stop that a second. Pry bar not strong enough. Better grip with gloves. Interfacing, maybe. I mean, maybe. Do any of these? Oh, this one increases my physical instrument. Endurance. This one's just drama. Oof. Uh. This orange machine is dead still. <laughs> it has a hand crank. That did nothing to my odds of getting this. An electric freezer. The ice around it. Slowly melting. Well. The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. Yeah, I mean. I mean, you know. <laughs> what is this? You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it. But this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advanced tool to get it open. Advanced? Where, where do we get one? I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. <sighs> then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. You need the Kvalsund? Is that true? Is that what I need? The crane? Is that... Do I need to go get the investor guy interested in the doomed commercial district? Hmm. Can I try this again? An old call box with... No, never mind. matrix of... Oh, where do you get the second tier pry bar? You get it from the scientist radio computer lady. Oh, okay. How do you get it? I, I, um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time talking to her. I didn't know about that. Uh, 
I know about the church, but it's not uh, that side of the map is not open to me right now. Uh, I just mean, I meant like, how do you get it from her? Like, yeah, I just haven't spent a lot of time talking to her. I know who you mean. Um, do I have enough money to get those trainers off that guy this time? No, 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 no. Yet, uh, smokes, go get him. Ha ha! <laughs> My thoughts just like spotted these cigarettes. This is great. All right. <coughs> oh my goodness. Ugh. Here's my guy. Oh, there's a bin over there. There's some bottles. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. Nice. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. What? <laughs> Try the shades on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. I've already got shades. No, you are definitely not buying those. No, I can't. We can't walk around with you looking like this. <laughs> okay, fine. Go ahead. The lieutenant's reverse psychology for Betty doesn't work on you. If you want to look like a mega secret midlife crisis, that's your choice. Yeah, I'll Good get them. Just to let me mess around with my stats. We'll see. We'll see. You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Well, speakers. I can see you've a taste for luxury officer. No, sneakers. Can't keep what? your eyes off those sneakers? Oh, there's sneakers on the speakers. Right, Jesus, <laughs> okay. Speaking of luxury, you should go Oh, These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable Found Ultras atop them. No, no, don't look at the speakers of it. Good move. A pair of Found Ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Okay. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. 50. Super air, super fine. Only? That's madness. Can't I just buy the sad conquered Samaran speakers? No way, officer. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low fi socialist junk. <laughs> That's why I want them. I think I might be low fi socialist junk myself. No, officer. You're a high class policeman. Who accepts nothing less than the best? Wait, what if I do Lucky deserve more than a lo-fi socialist sound ones. system? You do, officer, you do. Remember. Mm. It's annoying. If I wasted money on the bad sunglasses, I'd be closer to being able to get the, the sneakers. Don't be shy. Okay. How about this guy's so voice is very annoying. Deep. Economical, but also trendy. No uh, uh, no good. Okay. No luck? Why not take another look, officer? Keep supporting I don't like this guy's voice. <laughs> I feel like that's another bad choice there, honestly. Um, but I have some some tear now to sell at uh, Frit. Oh, let's go talk to the racist guy again. Looking for something odd? Oh, there's nothing interesting there. Okay, no mind. Okay. Uh, oh, time machine, that's what it was. 
The Come tear on. machine stands in the corner. Aside, your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money. That's not enough money for me to get those sneakers. God damn it. God damn it. I guess I already paid for my room tonight. <laughs> Since it looks like I'm going to spend all the rest of my money uh, uh, buying these sneakers if I can. Um. Oh, I need to go around this way. Okay. Right, let's go in here. Whoa. <laughs> Flip up glasses, the auditor. Fuck yes. I'm probably gonna put that shit on right now. Let's just be real. Oh, baby. Okay. <laughs> Those little round glasses make uh, Harry's nose and beard look fake. Well, that's more money. Let's do um, torch instead of cigarettes. I'm gonna smoke a cigarette first though. Just in case. Just in case. Alright, there we go. And heal that damage. The game is great, just I do not understand the accents. I saw somewhere a creator saying the city is a mix of many cultures, languages. I imagine this is why the accents are there, but accents are not languages, this is just weird. Yeah, right, and like they don't have people speaking the languages, they just have like the 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 people like sort of telling you the, the narrator telling you that languages are being spoken. I don't know, it's just it feels lazy and also a lot of the time you can tell that the accent is like being put on by someone whose accent it is not and it doesn't sound great. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says Number 11. Uh, knock. No reply. Examine the padlock. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. Better whip out those cutters. You won't. Okay. Okay, if you say so. Let's, let's get in on that. This door has been closed with the padlock. The shackle... After you, detect. <laughs> Just breaking into someone's apartment. Uh, don't mind us, it's normal police business. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth Oh reads baby. Kras Marzov. They'd have to conlang each language in order to keep in line with the amnesia. Well, then the then the you know um the least they could do is just get people whose real accents they are rather than have it like be very obvious, like fakey accents. That's what I'd suggest is the main thing. Like, right. He's known as the father of scientific communism, also known as Masovianism. His theories about economic history greatly influenced, some would even say sparked, the anti centennial revolution. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. Hmm, I think so too. Which is why he won't mind sharing his stuff with me. But that was a bullet though, right? Well. Oh. 
I guess I have a bullet now. That's strange. A plaster cast. Alright. No, let's go back in here. Where do I where do I need to be for that that thought to trigger? Oh, there it is. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, of course. That isn't just a five-pointed star. There we go. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism. In other words, the star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Thank also, you. Some social democrats were already using it. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Why white? Because white is the color of peace. Ah, huh. what does it evoke in me? Finish thought. Gone. Gone is the glory oh. of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. Tragic. Well, I'm still gonna wear the hat. Ah, another postcard. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Hey, what's this? That was a misaligned line, I think. Hmm, strange. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. Some kind of bug with the lines here, I think. Later then, entering this door seems a physical challenge. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is big. Yeah, it's playing the wrong... It's playing the wrong lines. That's weird. Swap out the. Just, just hold the cigarettes. Let's just hold the cigarettes and and the pyrolidon. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> this woman's health is failing her. There's not much to do, not in this damp. Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. It is very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Hmm. Hmm. I'm taking some more Pyrolidon. Why not? Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Pea brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin, Martin A. Oh, I'll get a Nana a blanket. Anyone who comes mm. from Martin A. I wish I could. Like Tim Jambrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops. You really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. <laughs> anyway, officer, we don't have the witnesses now. How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony, know where he lives? Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, <laughs> right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? He's wanted for murder. He's going away for life. He's actually not wanted for murder. We just want to talk with him. Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. 
It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Oh. If you can call it living. But it's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't comp And all she gets, too. The coast. Ask away, policeman. Who lives in apartment number 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. But I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good. Great. Young people. They're worse than the artiste. She leaves an... Oh. Alright. So it should be the... It's like the real estate... Uh, the realtor? You hear someone walking around This apartment's inside. supposed to be empty. Did real you break raging. in? Still got nothing coming from the other side of the... Scare room. them. Suspected of some big crime. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. I don't need a warrant if I suspect there's been a break-in. Still nothing. Have they just not voiced this part? Because they said it was going to be fully voiced. This is kind of... This is a shame. But then again, there was also a bug. So maybe they've just... The files aren't playing. That was smart. Okay. Let's have a look then. Hello. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? I think it's probably a bug because because now she has a voice, you know. Her voice is really cheerful despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. She's a terrifying portrait. It's a um, jokerified realtor. Be friendly. Uh, nice haircut. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. I glimpsed a foreclosed apartment. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Ah, three. a and parasite. Again, I have okay. no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even. So preppy. Hmm. She's probably on some low grade performance enhancers, like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. Mm -hmm. The sum must have been puny. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. My money, my money has also disappeared. I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't have been that much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. <laughs> it's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate. Jesus Christ. Life into bank accounts. Thank you, Tony. Yes, all landlords are bastards. Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to... Both right. apartments are now unrentable. All right. I need to get it ready for the next lease. <laughs> Sounds like you've spent too much time. Uh, it was some kind of uh, That was my Of okay. course. Uh, okay. Original Kuno voice was memorable, but the new one is probably less grating in the long run. Uh, the, I've been saying it's not just that it's less grating, it's also like, I think, better because it's like. Um, it's not. Um, it, does, it makes him less of a cartoon character, which is good a couple of times around, in my opinion. Like, he, um, he's more sympathetic and therefore more sad, which is half of the character. And at the same time, he's more, um, um, more of a little shithead. A shift in temperature. It's kind of easier to hate him. 
Dust settles on the stony floor. Rub your sides for warmth. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. The plan. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Look around yourself. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. Shiver, finished thought. Is that pencil somewhere? Yeah, not that I can see. Well, it's a bit more money. Right, I said I was going to unlock one of these so that I could internalize anti-object task force. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, no, nothing to be done. All right. I'm not going to bother talking to Cindy right now. I'll come up here again later, I think. Or I might stop the playthrough. Oh yeah, it's pretty close to what I'm going to stop anyway. I'm just going to explore this room then, and I'll stop here and I'll talk to Cindy at the start of next time. Um, I'm probably going to stream tomorrow do when I'm doing some editing, um, and I might I might play some Valheim too during the day at some point. Um, and, oh, there's my, there's my blue jeans. Nice. Is it locked? Is that what that means? Huh, oh, that's annoying. Electrochemistry goddess. What the fuck? Electrochemistry wreck it, Jack. <laughs> what the fuck? This is so funny. Oh, thanks for the cheer. Uh, it is not yet time. Um, put those back on and the jeans. The pockets of these new jeans Here are we perfect go. for sticking your hand into. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. Not familiar in a good way, uh -oh. you might say. There's pain in there somewhere. Uh-oh. Right, what else is there going around here? Hmm. <gasps> More Pyrolodon! <laughs> it said it was on fire and I was like, Pyrolodon? <laughs> um, Alright, cool. I think I'm gonna call it there, because like I said, I've still got um some filming and then some editing and then exporting and then organizing and a bunch of stuff to do tonight. So I, I'm gonna um, head off at this point, I think. Is there anything else in this area before I before I do? Alright, I'm gonna save it right there. 
going to stand right here so I'm ready to talk to Cindy next time. Uh, can I just turn around and not, not, not just be facing the wall? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. Okay, cool. And I will save. Beautiful. So, uh, let me just... I'm going to quit out of it so the music isn't just playing behind me there. Uh, this will go up on the archive channel. Uh, my editing streams don't go up on the archive channel um, just because uh, I like to keep them sort of small and simple. Um, like I said, more editing streams tomorrow and um, I'll probably take a, break, take a break and play some Valheim for a bit at some point tomorrow as well. Uh, there'll be a lot of editing streams uh, for the time being because I need to um, I need to do a lot of editing. There's just, it's just a huge project, so I'm just going to be like on it for a while. Um, yeah, so come hang out tomorrow if you if you're around, and I'll be there editing slash playing some Belheim. Okay. Um,